Amen. We're so grateful to get to share these, these moments together tonight and celebrate all that the Lord has done in uh, these lives. And thank you so much, church family, for uh, opening your doors, opening your hearts, and just having a place where uh, students can come from all over. Thank you to those who pray. Thank you to those who give. Thank you to those who spend time and uh, mentor. And uh, we're going to get it kicked off. We've got a handful tonight. So, Sydney, go ahead and come on up and share what the Lord has done in your life. Can you all see me? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, North Love, and the many watching. My name is Sydney Abeda. I'm 28 years old, and I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado. <laughs> uh, excuse my emotion. I'm just so grateful for what the Lord has done in my life, and what He's saved me from. The life that I had before coming to the home was deep di addiction, and um, today I have seven months victory from meth and heroin. <laughs> I spent most of my life, my adult life, in um, jail and rehab, off and on. Coming back into church, back and forth, but I always had RU to go back to. And um, so when I came to the ladies' home, I was guilty and ashamed and confused. But one thing I did know that I needed was Jesus. This is truly God's program. I thank Steve Carrington for what he did. And um, what I've learned here at the home is that this is a spiritual battle. And I know a lot of people out there that are hurt and don't know what a spiritual battle that they're in. But here I've been able to find out and be equipped with the tools and the weaponry that I have to continue. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. I just want to thank everybody that's been investing in me, <laughs> my church, my friends, and um, my plans are after the after I graduate tonight as I'm continuing in the grad program so that I can better strengthen my foundation walk, my walk, my foundational walk with Jesus Christ, which is I'm off to a really great start, I think. And um, my jo job that I'm going to be having is a steward at the ladies' home, which I think that's kind of a dream job right now. And I can't think of anybody else better or any place better to be, to be safe and secure and to keep learning about our Heavenly Father. Thank you. Good evening, North Love. My name is Taylor. I'm 26 years old and I'm from Baytown, Texas. I came to the RU men's home in January fully addicted to Xanax and opiates. My addiction started when I was 16. When I was 11, my dad passed away from high blood pressure I was really close to my dad, and we always went hunting and fishing together. After he passed, I moved away with my aunt to Georgia because my mom had addiction problems, and my aunt wanted the best for me. After five years, I chose to move back to Texas with my mom and my sister. Things were different when I came back, and taking pills seemed to be a normal part of the lifestyle where I grew up. I had a lot of anger and hurt built up towards God for taking my dad when I was so young. Since I moved back to Texas, I lived a reckless lifestyle, including gangs, stealing, and using drugs with my own family. It started out all fun and games until I started suffering the consequences from using. My physical appearance changed. I was in and out of jail, and I lost everything I owned. I lived out on the streets for a while or moved from place to place because I couldn't pay my rent or my bills when, with my drug habit. I lost my sister in 2016 when she got hit by a truck walking across the road. This really tore me apart and I no longer wanted to live. Since then I've overdosed and turned blue in the face from a drug dealer poisoning me. I wasn't breathing for a period of time and God literally saved my life that night without going to a hospital. I've lost several jobs because I wasn't dependable and I didn't think I could function without drugs. 
In May 2019, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I met a friend from an electrical job, and he started telling me about God and what he can do for me if I would just let him. I could just see the Holy Spirit working in this man, and I knew that if God could transform this guy and change his life, then he could change mine also. I knew God, but I still tried to do everything in my own strength, and I would fall every time. I decided to surrender to God and come to Rockford, Illinois. I knew I could no longer rely on myself, but I had to give everything to God and rely on his strength and power to get me through this. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Since I've been here in Rockford, God has worked in my heart and transformed me. I'm no longer fascinated by the things I used to do, and by faith I'll continue to follow God's will for my life and let him lead me instead of doing what my flesh wants. He has put it in my heart to stay up here and continue my walk with him. My past no longer hurts me, but it motivates me to keep pushing forward and continue in the victory with the power of Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Um, hello, my name is Ryan Cook. I grew up in church, being in a youth group, but still wanting to learn worldly things. Being one person at church and another one at school, it wasn't long till the worldly person took complete control. And before I realized I was too far down the wrong road, decades flew by, I had two beautiful daughters, a failed marriage, and some near-death eye-opening experiences. I knew God was telling me to get back to what I knew I should have been doing all along. I realized I had left him, but he never left me. Even though I got back in church and started working with the youth department and helping in the church activities, I realized I couldn't do, do it all in works alone. I needed to fully give my life to God. But no matter how hard I tried, I still felt a void in my life, like I was running on 110 volts instead of 220. My high school friend, Matt, which is also the youth pastor of my church, taught me in sitting down and talking to our pastor about the RU recovery program to help me fully get rid of my addictions holding me back. They explained how the six to eight month program would help me take a time out from the world and worldly things and put all my time on God, focusing on God, building a foundation for our relationship. It wasn't long after I started the program that I realized what I was missing. I knew Jesus, but I never fully connected with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the other 110 volts I needed to run on full 220 power volts. I plan on taking the knowledge I have learned at my program and teaching and sharing them with the youth department at my home church in Edgemont Baptist Church and my daughters before they go too far down the wrong road like I did. Thank you. Because that, Romans 121, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. When I started in January, my heart was darkened because of sin. Even though I was saved when I was young, baptized, and went to church all my life, my Christian life was not what it should have been. Like many Christians, my life was marked with many inconsistencies. I had times where I knew God and tried to serve God, but I never consistently learned to glorify him as God. I had never believed that the Christian life is the only way to live. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6, While I trusted Christ for salvation, I failed to recognize him as the way, the truth, and the life. I believed my way or sin was better than God's. He let me live my life for quite some time. Little did I believe or see the price my sin would cost me. My time at the IU Men's Home was a time of spiritual renewal. It began with confession first to God and then to my beautiful wife. With my sins confessed and my soul at peace, I was feeling better and hopeful for the future, but I still had five and a half months to go. Apparently, God had more for me to learn. During the first months of my program, God seemed to be teaching me to trust, obey, be content, and to minister or be compassionate to other people around me. Being so far from my family, doubting if I am doing the right thing or if this will be enough was an always present struggle. Daily, I had to ask God for the strength to continue to yield to him through the program. Daily, he delivered. 
During the second half of my program, I found life to be dragging. New decisions and activities seemed to give way to monotony. Discouragement, sin, and doubt were still always ready to keep me company. Thankfully, God turned my attention to faith. In Acts 3.16, Peter gives testimony of how he healed the lame man who was in front of the temple. It says, In his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. This verse reminds me that through faith in Christ I am made strong, and he gives my spirit, soul, and body a perfect soundness. All I have to do is believe and obey. Wherefore, sirs, be a good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Acts 27, 25. I am very excited to be traveling home. I don't know what my future holds, but I know God holds my hand. He has given me two verses to end with. 2 Peter 2, 21 is a warning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. I hope God will never have to give me more personal experience with this verse. I conclude with Ecclesiastes 3.15, That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. And God has done, God is doing, and God will continue to do. Thank you very much for your ministry, IU, and North Love Baptist Church. Praise be to God. Good evening, North Love. My name is Brad Rayfelt, and I'm from uh, Rockford, Illinois. I started on this journey November 7th last year after what was really a three-year alcoholic binge. I came into the School of Discipleship an extremely broken person, not knowing who I'd become or even where I was headed. I was a complete mess. I was completely lost and bound by the sin that had slowly and sometimes not so slowly overtaken my life. I remember waking up the first couple weeks while in a sober mind, asking myself what in the world I was doing at a men's home. I come from a family full of God-fearing people who have done nothing but try and set the best example for me from the time I was born. This couldn't be my reality. The truth is, is it was my new reality. Instead of drinking away my pain as I've gotten really, really good at over the years, I started thinking about how I ended up here in the trail of extreme hurt and pain I've caused my family and friends throughout the years. I thought about the times I said I'd be somewhere and wouldn't show up because drinking became a priority over people who really cared about me. I thought about all the lies, manipulation, tears I've caused over this time. Because of what? Because sin took full control of my life. I didn't have a drinking problem, I had a heart problem. And that was because I didn't fully trust in God that he would take care of all my needs. I've been able to do it by myself for so long. Why turn to God now was my mentality. God slowly started to chisel, chisel away at my heart the first couple months, and my relationship with him started to grow. I started looking forward to jumping in the Bible and getting something I could apply for the day, even if it was 4.30 in the morning. Uh, my prayer time started becoming longer in turn from a monotonous prayer, which I've done for so many years, because that's the thing to do is to pray, to a heartfelt talk with God, something that I've been missing in my life for a long time. I knew something was changing in my heart. As time went on, I started to realize I had more joy, more peace. Being with a home full of guys, definitely more long-suffering. Uh, <laughs> Growing up, I remember my dad always having a peace about him and saying it was a peace that only God can, di God can give. I probably heard it thousands of times. I never truly understood what that meant, but I'm realizing now a peace that God can give is a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. The truth is this program isn't easy. In fact, it's pretty difficult. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But God is in this place if we just have the desire to meet him halfway. That's all he's looking for. A friend wrote me a letter the first month I was here with a verse which I've clung to daily. Ecclesiastes 7, 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for my future and continuing building on my relationship with him. I'll be staying in the grad program for the time being while rebuilding this foundation. Uh, and it's, it, I'm going off script here for a minute. Uh, it's really, really difficult to condense eight months of a program. For me, it was a little bit longer. Uh, in two to three minutes of a testimony. 
Uh, but I'll tell you what, it, it has truly been a blessing to see what God is doing in others' lives as well. It's been a constant encouragement to see what God's doing in each of these guys sitting over here. And um, I just want to add that. I want to thank my parents for constantly being the shining examples of God's word. Uh, the encouragement in tough times. Uh, they have given me the spiritual direction that I have not heeded to. And for that, mom and dad, I'm truly sorry. I'm sorry for the years of tears I've caused and I hope to rebuild the trust with you. I want to thank Pastor Kingsbury for the word that he's brought multiple times a week and the desire 20 some years ago to help the others who have a heart problem. I also want to thank Brother Cisco for his dedication and heart he has for this ministry. You've been a blessing beyond comprehension and to see the way God is working through you has been a real encouragement to me. Uh, Corey, for all the late night talks we've had in the steward's office, whether you've wanted me there or not, you've listened most of the time. <laughs> to the guys in the house, stay in the word, pray when you don't want to. There will be times when you fall and you'll feel like giving up, pray more. God will listen and he will work if we want him in our lives. And I can just add to that, there's been so many times, even in the house, I think somebody mentioned a spiritual battle day in and day out in the house, and it's true. It's absolutely true. There's a lot of oppression that happens from time to time. Uh, but I found that the closer you get to God in those times, he will reach out. He will reach out, but we've got to want it. We've absolutely got to want it. Amen. Thank you. You know, one thing that's unique about this graduating class is uh, not only the just transformation that God has done within their lives, but the vision that they've caught to then take that testimony and, and take a role of spiritual leadership in the home. And uh, I hope the, the students, current student body, uh, look to these graduates as, as an example. They're a great example. Um, also wanted to mention tonight, very special graduation for uh, Christy Reed, I believe, this Friday night, uh, was recognized for finishing. Uh, is, Christy, is Christy in here in the building tonight? Well, we want to congratulate her. And grads, if you'll stand if you, where you are, please. And uh, let's thank the Lord for what he's done in, in these graduates' lives. Thank you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for what we were able to be a part of tonight. Thank you for all those who have prayed, sacrificed, invested, and Lord, just uh, to mention all those names I know um, would just be a lot of time. But we want to recognize you because it's, it's only you, Lord. Everything that happens good in our life is because of you. It's a direct gift, and so thank you for those gifts. Thank you for these graduates. And we just want to pause and praise you, Lord. We want to also pray, uh, add your protection on these students, Lord, as they embark in this next chapter of their lives. I pray that they would go forth by faith and just experience uh, new levels, Lord, and new joys walking with you. And I pray that you be with us, Lord, the rest of this service also. Please receive uh, glory from everything that's said and done. In Jesus' name, amen.